you were a member of the Electoral Reforms Committee charged in 2007 with the responsibility of reviewing the electoral process and proffering solutions. And if the constitution had to, uh, was said at that time that if the constitution had to be amended, you know, we should do it so that we get the electoral process right. How far down the road have we traveled since that time? The Electoral uh, Reform Commission had very little to do with changing the constitution. It was changing the electoral office. It was suggested at the time that even if it meant it was muted, that even if it meant changing the constitution, let's do it, you know, let's uh, to, to make sure that uh, the electoral process be, but anyway, how far down the road have we come? We haven't come. We haven't come at all. Um, whatever work we did in those two years, and we did work. Uh, fortunately, the former head of INEC before the current gentleman was um, part of the, of the Electoral Reform Committee. And I had known him before because he was one of the VCs and was relating to us. In, in, a very, very brilliant person, very honest person, the kind of person that Nigeria needs to run institutions like that. But when we finished the exercise, the papers were put away in some cupboard somewhere and locked up. And no changes were effected. I don't think anybody has even reopened them to have a look at them since then. Um, we do that in Nigeria. We waste a lot of time and effort in identifying the direction we should go, the strategy we should use, and then we put it away. And then we do nothing about it. We don't comply with it. It sometimes has to do with the people who worked on it are not my people, so I'm not going to support it. But when it's said and done, really, um, we should be there for the country, for the citizens, and not for my people or the other people. I, I think one of the reasons why the electoral reform hadn't worked out is that um, really the various parties, when they register with INEC, they don't have to give any a program for what they're going to do. Just that 10 of us want to form XYZ party, and we're registered. We don't have to say what we represent. So really today, what's the difference between A and B and C of the various political parties? None of them have made any declaration different from the other. I think it's because we are so far back in terms of development of the country that really the work to be done is the same by whoever comes in. And the differences could be in the approaches, but we don't have any approach. We don't have, we're doing the same thing. And when it's said and done, um, Two years ago, three years ago, we called um, the constitutional body. And a lot of work was done. But then, at that time, one party said they were not going to be part of it. And that party is in control now. And they are not bringing it out. So all that effort is wasted. And that effort brought out what Nigerians wanted. There was a wide searching for members of that organization so that everybody would be represented. And I was, had, had nothing to do with it, but from what we read, it really did explain what Nigeria want, Nigerians wanted. Not the ones that making the money, the Nigerians, the suffering ones, what we really wanted. And unfortunately, nothing is being done about that too. It's a great pity, it's a great pity. What does gender equality mean to you? Maybe I'm not the person to talk about gender equality because I haven't even suffered gender inequality. But um, I had made up my mind quite early on that I'm a person, a citizen, and I will not um, push myself down because somebody else says I'm this, that, or the other. I'm equal to any other person. So I haven't really suffered gender inequality. But um, I, I think that women have certain roles to play, additional to just being a citizen of the country. And those roles occupy a great deal of their thoughts and their time. And if you do that, then if you're talking in terms of gender inequality in the public sphere, you don't have as much time or commitment for that as the men have. And so men tend to move faster than the women. 
we have so many distractions in our lives. Um, in the same way that uh, we do not expect to, we, we complain about not matching them on some public issues, we can also, they can also complain about not matching us in giving birth. <laughs> so uh, God designed us for various things. Um, in Nigeria, we have a gender inequality issue because of the traditions, and we're just getting out of it. It's slow, and I think it should be expected to be slow. But uh, we're doing very well. We're doing very well now. Uh, generally, there is a focus on females now in many issues, in many countries, in the world generally. And fortunately, the Nigerian girls are very enterprising, and we're catching on on it. And uh, I don't think that, I think that the, the girls who are coming up now shouldn't really complain too much about gender inequality. You know, women have to multitask and do all kinds of things, as you suggested in your last response. What are the qualities needed to manage and coordinate multi-projects and multidisciplinary projects? An, an analytical mind, a total commitment to what you're doing. Whatever you're doing, you must put everything into it. Um, a sound basic education in, respect, in those areas that are relevant to whatever it is you're doing. Those are the things I would think are essential to start off with. Mrs. Toyo Lakuri, we thank you for your time. Thank you very much. I've enjoyed being with you. And we thank you for watching. Please join us next time when the program returns. But between now and then, do let's continue our conversation online at channelstv.com where you'll see this and previous editions of the program if you missed them. Thank you again for watching. See you next time.